Well, hello, ultra racing fans, and welcome back to the second episode of Ultra Race Report's coverage of the 2014 Hoodoo 500. I'm Jarek Wilhelmsen. Today, we had the official start of the Voyager, Solo, and Teams division. So let's check it out. It was early, but not yet bright, as the Voyager division congregated at the starting line. The difference in the Voyager division is that they are self-supported. We don't even get an escort. Right, we, right. We got to find our own way out. <laughs> but for these racers, perhaps the additional challenge is the reward. Maybe it was the 5 a.m. start or the lack of crew, but it was a quiet start as these solitary riders slipped into the darkness. Two hours later, the mood was significantly different as the solos began to arrive at the starting line. Crew members and fans crowded around to take pictures as the racers lined up. We spoke with solo racer Andy Wong from Canada who used some local resources to train for these climbs. Well, it caught my attention because it was a qualifier for RAM, so I figured I'll give that one a try if I can get through this one. And I spent about a year training for this, uh, this ride. What did you do to help with the climbing? Uh, we have a lot of wind, and pretty much the wind is the resistance, which is similar to the hill, so a lot of spinning. You know, you gotta get comfortable spinning fast and not pushing it. So hopefully that translates into uh, hill cycling. The countdown began, and as the clock hit 7 a.m., they were off. One, here they go, the start of the Hoodoo 500 Solo Division, 520 miles, they're off. Now, if the solo start was upbeat, the team start was downright festive. Riders from Team Chubby relished in their role in entertaining the crowd. Um, well, if I, if I don't braid it, it flows behind me. Sometimes it whips around and gets in my face. When I climb, I'm, my head's basically looking at my top tube because I'm slow. Gary's our hairdresser. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gary Ogden, Hi, my name's Gary Ogden. It's nice to meet you. How are you? Uh, hostess is the mostest. We're trying to get a sponsor, uh, trying to get Hostess a sponsor, so, um, you know, what can I say? It, it's, it's quick carbs. So they're not your sponsors. You're trying to get sponsorship with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, 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 uh, we're anyone that wants to sponsor us, anyone at all, we'll, we'll accept sponsors. All fun aside, there are many reasons for riding. Bob Nicholson from Team Smiling Coyote has a cause very near and dear to his heart. We had a son with uh, type one diabetes, and uh, he passed away. So we, uh, along with a lot of other people. With, all these names on the shirt are, are kids that have passed away with type 1 diabetes. So uh, on a lot of rides, mile 23 is a mile of silence where you remember these children. So we ride for these kids and you know, hopefully a cure one day. And as 8 a.m. arrived, another send off as the teams joined the race. <laughs> over 20 miles in, and racers are still fairly close to each other, as teams and crews hey. mix and mingle and jockey for position. Although not exactly in the Voyager category, some teams, such as Red Racing, chose the crew themselves. So what kind of pulls are you pulling there? Uh, I'm gonna do 60. She just did the first 28. Okay, I did the hill. <laughs> she, does, she does the hill. She's a lot lighter than I am, so I do the flats. That's my, my forte. Yep. While some teams have years of experience with each other, others, such as Who Knew, are just getting to know each other. Oh, you use Accelerate too? Yeah. All right. just, which one do you have? Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, teammate. Nice to meet you and find out what you drink. Right. <laughs> A bit further up the course, we ran into our first solo, who was exactly where he wanted to be. Still coming in last. How are you feeling, though? Feeling great. Beautiful out here. Scenery's terrific. Winds are light, not too hot. How was that hill? The first hill, fine? It's behind me, who remembers it? By setting a goal of last place, there is nowhere to go but up. His crew had a different perspective. I'm at 12.8 right now. Will, you're... 
And when, when I talk to him right now, he said, my average is 12.8. He knows he only has to average a strong, you know, good 11 to finish. So he thinks he's doing fine. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> Much further up the course was a team whose goals were significantly different. Team Metal Spy Ultra Racing is here to set a record. And it was apparent as they hammered away towards Time Station 1. We passed a few more racers and thought we might catch the front runners before Time Station 1 in Kanab, Utah, but just missed them. So as you can see by the leaderboard, our first Voyager through was Dave Hossey at 9.41 this morning. In the traditional solo division, Colin Stokes led Brooke Henderson by one minute as they entered Time Station 1 at 11.40 a.m. And the first two-person team to arrive was Team Metal Spy Ultra Racing who arrived at 11.51 a.m. Wow, what an exciting race. We're gonna jump back on course and beeline it to Time Station 2 to try to catch those front runners. So keep checking back with us to uh, find out the latest news or any breaking news. Check us out on Facebook at Ultra Racing Network or on Twitter at Ultra Race Reports. By the time we log our next report, the stage racers should have finished their second leg. So we'll bring you that information too. But until then, we'll see you out there. This presentation was brought to you by Zoetic Photography. International award-winning California photographer John Wilhelmson specializes in portraiture, fine art, and compositions. Learn more at www.zoeticimagery.com.